Howdy. Uh, my name is Billy. I'm the field trip coordinator and uh, summer camp counselor for the Catamount Institute. Um, and our mission is to connect uh, folks to the outdoors. And so what I'm going to be doing is connecting y'all to the outdoors virtually and also I'll, I'll, I'll say virtually squared because we're going to be looking at software apps that you can use uh, to explore nature just in your backyard. Okay, and today we're going to be looking at an app called iNaturalist. So you can either go to the bookstore and get over a hundred dollars worth of books to know about the plants and animals and tracks, etc., funguses, etc., um, in your backyard or in your state. Um, or you could also download this free app uh, that has all of the plants and animals in the world. <laughs> um, and it can help you ID stuff in your backyard, identify stuff in your backyard if you've never identified anything in your life before. And it's also a large part of citizen science, and that is citizens taking part in the scientific process, taking part in the data collection process, because scientists use this data, people IDing stuff in their backyards and stuff like that, they use this data um, for biodiversity projects. Biodiversity is looking at the variety of life um, in an area, either species, ecosystems, or even on the genetic level. Um, it's a super important thing uh, for the health and protection of our Earth, and I could talk about biodiversity for days, but let's hop into this app and, and see how we can use iNaturalist um, to explore the biodiversity of our backyards. Alrighty, so we're just going to hop in um, from the top. So I'm going to just go to the App Store, Apple App Store, um, and search for iNaturalist, the name of the app we'll be using today. iNaturalist is... Um, has its roots in Stanford and the California Academy of Sciences um, and is also uh, a partnering organization with National Geographic now. Um, it's been up and going since 2008. Um, really reputable, reputable and it's free as well. Um, you do need to do a quick, really quick uh, register to use it um, because it is a social app in a way in that you can see what's in your neighborhood and people can see what you have posted in your neighborhood too to help them with their identification. Um, so this is what it looks like actually to register. I'll be doing it right now to show you how quick and easy it is. Um, and it's not really invasive at all with personal details. And it says, yes, license my content so scientists can use my data. And that's because uh, this app is so reputable and citizen science is so important. And sorry, what that is, Citizen science is what this app is basically doing, is citizens being involved in the science process and the data collection process, um, because more hands on deck makes science go a lot farther. All right, so I'm just gonna pick, put on my camera real fast and make a little quick profile picture. Oh yeah, and then we're gonna hop in just to using the app right away. Uh, you actually can just click on observe, and it goes right into the camera mode, or you can actually upload a photo from your own library. Um, but what's right in front of me right now is just some dandelions. I'm using a plant that I already know the name of, which is useful. Um, and also, just right there, how easy is that? Okay, so I say you can have access to my photos. Like I said, you can also go the other way and just upload one photo from your library into the app. Okay, and then you'll see that it pulls up um, some settings before you post what you just observed. And it doesn't give your address out, it just gives a general location. Um, and this is from my view, but this is so other folks can know where the plant is. And that's because life, you know, grows in some areas and not in some other areas. It helps people find, figure those sorts of things out. Um, you can put notes in there so whoever sees your post can get some context um, to your photo. Um, this can help with them helping you identify your plant or whatever else you're taking pictures of. Or um, it can help let others know what kind of situation uh, you found the plant in or other life form. Um, and then actually the plant, if you click on the photo that you took, it will bring up what it thinks based on what it's seeing uh, physically with the plant's traits, uh, what it thinks the plant species is, and it gives its best guesses um, and its top guess. And then you can actually click on the guesses to explore more, you can actually look back between the plant and the photos it has on the on the site, on the app, um, to see, mm, do these leaves look a similar shape? Um, does this one have these little fuzzies? Does this one not have these little fuzzies? That sort of thing. And you can kind of poke around and see what your options are. 
you can see this one this looks like it has some similar leaves and stuff like that but it's obviously a taller non-dandelion plant um, and actually if you click on dandelions click on that little eye on the right side there it gives you some info some photos and it actually will give you a map of everywhere people have seen and posted dandelions um, this map you can zoom in and stuff but we're not going to because look it's everywhere I mean, if you click on more info on iNaturalist.com, this is where the real juicy uh, meat of the data is. Um, way more in-depth maps that you can explore. And it's got maps with plant phenology. When is the plant seeding? When is it going um, into germination? When is it sprouting in the next seasons? The history, like when have people seen it and when have people um, not seen it? When did they first start seeing it? This map here, you can get real, real... <laughs> detailed with where dandelions are occurring across the globe. Um, this app actually has um, over 25 million different observations that it's been uh, that's been posted to it. Um, and then if you go to about, this might take us just loading. There we go. It has super detailed information just from the old Wikipedia, everyone's favorite household friend for researching. Um, and it can goes into as much information as you would want uh, for that plant, at least. Um, dandelions, it goes into how to ID them correctly, um, how to treat dandelions as a weed, how do we know they're a weed, where do they come from, that sort of thing. And um, the trends part of this is actually trends as in uh, social media kind of trends. So who's been posting this, um, how much, when, that sort of thing, and where as well. Go ahead and post our dandelions. And I do have Wi-Fi where I'm sitting, but you can um, often save a post to wait till you where you have wi-fi or you can just use your data if you're so lucky to have such a thing <laughs> and so we're uploading our dandelions and this means that people um based on our privacy settings that we set within the app people will be able to look at the map um of the united states and zoom in on fat in the united states and see uh, where dandelions have been or click on our neighborhood and see um, what plants have been found and see that we got a lot of dandelions here in suburbia um, and so this is what it looks like from the people observing it and i can edit my posts after the fact or delete them as well ba -ba 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 boom um, and i keep the geo privacy open because no one ever i've used this app for a year or two now um, and no one like chit chats with each other it's all just someone trying to correct an identification um, or just browsing. No one usually talks to each other <laughs> otherwise. Um, but here's someone posted this bull snake. They gave a little context. I know exactly where it is on these trails by my house. This is a little riparian area, a little uh, wetland. Um, and if I can scroll through found, I can zoom out. I can see what else is around here. Some people got some crab spiders. That's pretty cute, a cute little spider. What else we got? Um, and this is all just from Google Maps, so it's not... Ooh, that's a nice picture of a Cooper's Hawk. Beautiful. And at the bottom of the, of the observations, it'll tell you if they're a casual ID, like someone just poking around, like I just did with my dandelions. Um, they'll be able to say if it's um, they need help with their ID, and they'll be also um, say if it's a ID for research or an ID that can be used for research, so scientists can use it. Um, scientists use this data quite often. It's actually registered with the uh, Global Biodiversity um, Initiative. You actually look real quick at projects. Um, projects are something that you can create or something you can join if someone's created one. Um, and it's helping people collect data with different projects. Um, City Nature Challenge has been going on since 2016 started in LA and has been an annual event in April where different cities compete to see who can have the uh, most observations, most participants to doing a uh, data collection of the wildlife in their backyards. Um, it started in LA and it's now international. I um, mean, they have guides available too. The app will search for guides in the area that you can download to your phone or use on the app. Um, so here's the nearest ones toward, are in my area. Um, and you can see these are all the butterflies that the Colorado Parks and Wildlife um, Department have said are in the Pueblo Lake area. All right, back at it. Now I wonder if we got, ah -ha ho who is this? A cute little spider. Uh, 
That's what I'm talking about. Counting it up, counting it up, getting biodiverse. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's try one that I know is not a weed, just for fun. Because this backyard, I don't own it, I'm a renter, but it's very biodiverse, like native plant wise. And I'll show you how you don't even need leaves for it to be super, super, super common, even though I guess astragalus is are pretty common. But, um,. Look at some photos. Ooh, someone posted the seed pods for when it's that time of year to be looking at that sort of thing. Let's do that one real fast. Ooh, and this plant, I think, even though it is not currently greened up, I think we can still ID it based on it having um, its seed head still. Let's see here. Yep, this is totally what I thought it was. Boom. Got some feather finger grass. Beautiful grass. All right. So as you can see, uh, iNaturalist is a super useful and fun tool for anyone trying to really explore their area, learn more about their local native fauna, um, and also see what people are doing and looking at in the area around them. Um, I hope this is something that you guys use in this time we have. Spare time on our hands, learn a thing or two, but also it's really fun to use hiking, uh, camping, or with friends and family in the future. It's almost like Pokemon Go. Uh, but for our local living non-virtual friends. Um, hope you have a good one, and I'll talk to you guys soon.